All right, welcome to part three of three in the episodic adventure, if you will, of the genesis of TPT. Now, here's the thing. Necessity is the mother of all invention. I'm pretty sure that's the 20th time I've said this in the context of the episode, but you know what? You gotta put your money where your mouth is. Just like the notorious B.I.G. once said, mo' money, mo' problems. Time is money, money is time. Got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. If you were paying attention in parts one and two of this episode on the genesis of TPT, I have discussed the fact that there is a situation of calamity, of confusion, of peril. It was a financial catastrophe in the county in which I was residing and was employed in. I was hit up with property taxes that was tapped out to the max out of the bajillion counties that are in the state of Georgia. This particular county of which I was finding employment had the highest property taxes. That doesn't make sense because I worked in a very rural, uh, very small, quiet county. And so there's no reason why property taxes were out the wazoo. Well, there was a very uh, legitimate uh, constructive reason we had to pay bills because <laughs> so we needed to raise revenue, if you, if you will. And so the, only, the quickest way you could do that as a, as a business, as an entity, as uh, the, the, the enterprise that is the school system, look, raising those property taxes. And so, or sometimes there's a special tax that they can employ to acquire special funds for a special project. But let's get back on topic. With the TPT, total participation techniques, nah, man, teachers pay teachers. Teachers pay teachers. Look, when I shook the hand of the founder, Paul Edelman, when I met him in Las Vegas at, at our first, Bowtie Guy and wife, our first conference, uh, that we went to, uh, that was really just a group think tank of entre- like, I and mean, they call them teacherpreneurs. I call them entrepreneurs. Look, and I understand teacherpreneurs. It's it's teachers who were employed in the, uh, the 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 teaching profession. So they were teaching Monday through Friday, nine months a year. But also they had a second job, but one that they didn't necessarily have to work so hard at, like I was working at with Lowe's. See. Teachers Pay Teachers offered me a conduit to really maximize my own personal my own personal time and to my benefit. So instead of late nights watching television, I quickly, and I, I can go ahead and say that Teachers Pay Teachers has a direct correlation on this, uh, but there was a time where I used to watch baseball games in their entirety. I used to watch three hour baseball games. I used to watch TV uh, and I was quickly uh, growing in the belly side, if you know what I'm saying. Any opportunity I had when I wasn't working at Lowe's or teaching, look, I was just trying to veg, if you will, sitting there like a vegetable. Because you know what? Sometimes it's good to just not think. <laughs> I mean, just sit, sit and get, baby. Look, our mental capacity can only handle so much. We have mental limitations. So anyways, I realized that it was at that particular time, about 2013, where I just found myself I believe that was the time that my wife and I mutually agreed that we would no longer have cable. We would no longer have satellite. We would no longer pay for these subscription services because we never used it. And I'm going to be honest with you because every minute we had that was not spent playing with our daughter and and growing with her and loving on her and, and doing our teaching profession, every spare minute that we had, we were pouring into what was, it was blossoming almost immediately and and i know that it, it's almost like a cautionary tale with teachers pay teachers because i want to be honest with you we have experienced tremendous success but i tell you that it is coming on it has come on backbreaking labor and backbreaking commitment and loyalty and uh resolve in what we eventually uh created as an s corp uh business where we we recognized holy cow we're making a lot of money. And then there came a time where my wife kind of sloughed off because we realized that her salary had been surmised, has been supplanted by Teachers Pay Teachers. We All of a sudden, we could keep her at home. So when we had another daughter, look, she was more readily available because of TPT, hashtag because of TPT. And, and I'm, not, I'm not advocating that, you know, all teachers should leave the profession. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that 
for what matters most in this particular season of life. My wife could utilize her time that she's given. Remember those 24 hours that I was telling you about? Look, the great God Almighty on the parapets of heaven has ordained and blessed us, caressed us the 24 hours in a day. Now, that's part of that Gregorian calendar affix, but you need to understand that, you know, it was easy for her to kind of slough off and, you know, we did not skip a beat. We came to a spot where it was comfortable, where I still taught. And I actually taught for three years without my wife. We, I just, and I'm going to be honest with you, in retrospect, I think I hung on three years too long because I almost couldn't make that wholesale commitment to my business. And during this time, my wife, you know, she has homeschooled my daughter. She has um, just been more available for some of the school functions and just uh, she, she's she been able to develop her mission field and, and employ herself in, in, in engagements with cultivating young girls and, and, and just in great uh, journeys of faith. And so, you know, I was really proud of her currency of time that she had acquired. And so, but I was still committed to the profession as I always will be, uh, but it just seemed like I was serving two masters. And so inevitably at 9.5, as I, cause I always tell a little Fibonacci's and I say, I've taught 10 years, you know, the secret between you and I, it's nine and a half years because in December of 2018, uh, universally, it's like got on the parapets of heaven, just said, go, go away. And, you know, and I just, it was odd. It was weird, but you know, like, look, I, sometimes I thought that, you know, I had a lot of, uh, I, had, I had like a messianic complex. Look, didn't skip a beat. That, that, that's the way a good system, you know, a developing system. Look, one one that's moving like a, you know, well-oiled machine. Look, you just replace the teacher, find a good teacher, develop, cultivate that teacher. And, you know, when they need to go off, look, you can handle that. And so, you know, it, it makes me feel comfortable that they were able to do that. And so now I'm in a place and I'm, I'm kind of... I'm skipping a lot in the, in the sense that like we have amassed over, you know, close to 1,600, 1,600 products. And you know, it's not always about quantity. Now it is impressive. I'm pretty sure we have the most products on Teachers Bay Teachers, but it has a lot to do with quality too. Because one thing we've had to learn is that over the course of the last six years or so, we've had to uh, innovate upon creations that were relevant in 2013, 14. However, you know, th that's what education is. It's, a, it's just an innovative, perpetual, ever evolving plane in the sky that's being built as it's flying. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So like, there's a lot of things in terms of like curriculum, in terms of like my own personal instructional strategy, instructional approach, research-based strategies that I, I, I really just kind of, I, it, it, I'm almost compelled to change some of the products to enhance the rigor, to enhance the uh, appeal, to enhance the uh, practicality, the usefulness, the user friendliness of the products. And you know, I've had to, we've had to innovate and change and all that. And then there's been this impetus where we spent a season and I, I'm still in the season of uh, creating content videos. And the reason why it gives me life, it speaks life because you know what? Give me a paintbrush, give me some color and baby, look, I'm in my happy place. I love to create. I, I, I feel totally confident and secure in the fact that God Almighty, in the parapets of heaven, smiling down on me, and he's happy when I'm happy, and I'm happy when he's happy. And you know what? He created me to do what I feel like I'm doing on Teachers Pay Teachers because I'm able to exercise what, is, what I believe is a God-given talent. You know, I love teaching. And, you know, and I've, I, inevitably I've came to, I, I have come to a place in my uh, instructional, my teaching, profession, professional journey that, you know, I've realized that when it comes to micro teaching and uh, teaching in the 21st century, I don't have to be a warm body in a classroom to be a teacher. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and, and I'm not saying I've graduated into like an emeritus status where I no longer have to be a contracted employee. No, what I'm saying is I can contribute to the profession you know, in a way that is much more effectual, much more uh, enriching for me, much more meaningful for me. And, and can I tell you that it's a mutually uh, beneficial uh, relationship that I'm happy, they're happy. Look, I love teaching in the classroom, but can I tell you that I, like I, I lost kind of my 
uh, my marathonness, my uh, tenacity, my stamina, if you will. Because if you look at the course of an entire academic year, by God, it's a marathon. It is. And you gotta self-love. You gotta take time to you gotta take time to refuel, if you know what I'm saying. If you don't, you end up in the dumpster because the kids in those classrooms, I don't know what you know, but you're getting the best of the best. Parents don't send you anything less. They don't send you any second rate child. No, they send you the best of what they've created. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm of the belief, look, we have some parents that do some really dilly-dally things, but I'm, I'm of the collective common positive belief. I like to think that most parents try their honest to God best. They utilize their schema, their frame of reference, their background to, to, to parent the best they can. They give you the best. Can't you do the same? You need to offer kids the best of you, not the rest of you as a teacher. Now, if you're not in a place where you feel like you're in the capacity that you can give, you can't, you can't pour baby. Look, you can't pour baby from an empty cup. You have to make sure that you have something to pour from that cup. Teachers pay teachers fills my cup, even to this day. Why? Because lucratively, I see the reward for my hard work. Uh, and I know that in the teaching profession, that is a really difficult, confusing, complex concept because teaching, to me, is one of the most thankless jobs, thankless professions on the face of the earth. Think about it, especially kindergarten, pre-K, pre-K, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade. What do you really remember about those teachers that you had back in the elementary school? Look, I'm being serious. <laughs> Maybe more than others, but honestly, as the years go by, I remember less and less. But you have to know that your teacher had an incredible affect, incredible influence, an incredible place in your heart where, you know, a vested stake, in, they had a vested interest in your development in, and in your potential. And you know what? You, you probably wouldn't know if, know them if you saw them, like if you pass them on the street. Look, but that's, isn't that what teaching is? You know, teaching is uh, teaching's like love and the fact that like, you know, it's like a universal language. Like anyone can teach. You know, you can teach by pointing your finger. Cavemen can teach by pointing, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, and articulating the thoughts. But you know, it's universal. Mathematics is universal. And the fact that math that they do in China is the same math that we're doing here in the United States. You got to understand that love is universal too. And if you love what you do, guess what? You are all right. Thank you for tuning in. This is part three of three, the genesis of TPT. We'll holler at you next time. Thanks for tuning in. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.